Math 31, here we are with example six. So I'm still sticking with that parent function of log base two of x that we saw back in example three. But I have this one half out here in front of it. So what that's doing is this one half is shrinking the y values from example three by a factor of one half. So y values are half those from example three. All right, so let me go ahead, scale and label my axes. And let's start talking about some traits. All right, so domain. All right, I do have a fraction, but my denominator is never zero because my denominator is always two. There's no x variable down here in the denominator, so it doesn't actually present a domain issue for me. I don't have a radical, but I do have a logarithm so I need that argument of x to be greater than zero, so my domain is zero to infinity. And again, wherever your argument zeroes out, that becomes your vertical asymptote, that boundary line that your function can't cross. So let's go sketch that in. So let's get some key points here. If I was going to do key points, again, I want to be efficient about what x values I choose. And since I have a base of 2, I'm going to pick powers of 2. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 4, 8. And let's see what we get here. If I plug 1 in, log base 2 of 1 is 0. 0 times a half is 0. Just taking note, I found an x-intercept. All right, if x is 2, log base 2 of 2 is 1. 1 times a half is 1 half. All right, for 4, log base 2 of 4 is 2. 2 times 1 half is 1. All right, for 8, log base 2 of 8 is 3. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. All right, so let's see what this is looking like. I've got 1, 0. I've got two, one half, I've got four, one, and I've got eight, three and a half. So you can see how much more compressed this graph is as opposed to the graph in example three. But at any rate, there we go. I can see my range goes from all the way down to all the way up, even if that up is pretty darn slow. So there's my range. And just for fun, let's go get the other traits. So let's think about the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, any end behavior, and do I have any holes? All right, so for my x-intercept, I actually spotted it, right? It's always when your argument is equal to one because when your argument is equal to one, the logarithm is zero and everything zeroes out. So I had an x-intercept at one comma zero, great. I don't have a y-intercept because zero is not in my domain. If you try and plug zero into the argument, you can't. For end behavior, again, take a look at your domain. You do not have the left end. It's not there. So I have no end behavior on the left, and I have a right arrow up. For holes, you have to have fractions, and we do have a fraction. But I don't have a factor that's common to the numerator and denominator that would cancel out, so I've got no holes. So there's my next or our next logarithmic function, graphed out, labeled and scaled. There are all my traits. If you're thinking, hey, can I graph this on my calculator? There is a way to do it. You don't directly have a log two button. So you would have to do this little uh, like workaround, and I will explain the workaround in a later section. I want us to work on graphing these by hand, and then in later excuse me, in later sections, we will I'll show you how you can get your graphing calculator to assist you with all of this. All right, so we still got a couple more to try. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.